So I'm chatting with Professor Paul Dastor from the University of Newcastle and F Materials today. Paul, thanks for joining me. Oh, absolute pleasure, Sam. Lovely to talk to you today. Now, look, I have to first of all congratulate you. Some, some great news has come through with some recent funding uh, to do with your research, um, with your team at the University of Newcastle. Um, and I wanted to start there exactly on that research. So I'm wondering if you can tell us a little bit about um, these glucose biosensors you've been working on. Yeah, sure. Yeah, no, we're, we're very excited about the news as well. In fact, we're, we're still reeling. But to, um, to go into uh, what the technology actually is, what we've been developing over, oh, Sam, it's probably been about the last 15, 16 years, is the ability to manufacture transistors via printing. So as uh, many of the members of the AMF node will know, and, and others around the world will know, the we work on a technology associated with a set of materials known as semiconducting polymers. And these are electronic organic materials, they're, they're polymers, they're, they're plastics, if you like, um, that act as semiconducting materials, which means that we can build electronic devices from them. The exciting thing, though, is that they exist as liquids. Unlike conventional semiconductors like silicon, which is hard and rigid, it's like a glass, these materials we can dissolve up into solutions and then we can print them. And we can print them using standard printing machines, inkjet printers, and uh, more recently, we've been working on reel-to-reel -reel printing, really large-scale printing. So that's the transistor sign. What we've also been working on over these years is being able to integrate a biomolecule directly into the transistor structure. You see, a transistor is both a switch and an amplifier. And what we worked out was that if we could put a biomolecule like an enzyme directly into the transistor structure, we could affect the way the transistor worked. We could turn it off and turn it on, and we could amplify the signal. So the first um, enzyme that we looked at was actually the one to detect glucose, and that's known as glucose oxidase. And using that enzyme directly embedded in the transistor, in fact, we just stir it into one of the inks and print it as one of the layers, then we're able to create a sensor that we can print at really low cost, but that's really sensitive. And it turns out these sensors are 100 times more sensitive than standard blood glucose sensors, which is good because it turns out the glucose in your saliva is about 100 times lower concentration than the glucose in your blood, and it follows the concentration in your blood. So we were excited many years ago to think, well, perhaps we could develop a sensor for glucose, a detector for glucose that used your saliva rather than your blood. Fascinating. And this is going to you know, help with people living with diabetes as well, correct? Oh, absolutely. That's the main focus, of course, Sam. I mean, that there's close to half a billion people around the world with diabetes. And if you've got diabetes, you know what you have to do. You have to stab yourself four, five, six, ten times a day to work out what your glucose level is and whether you should have insulin, whether you're able to eat and, and so on. It's, it's awful. It's painful. And in fact, that blood testing, having to, to lance yourself, puts people off. And so what happens is they don't tend to test. And so they're not monitoring their glucose as well as they should. And so their health outcomes are really poor. This technology hopefully will allow people to simply use their saliva to test their glucose. And this work you've been developing on small scale at the campus at University of Newcastle, uh, I'm correct in saying? We started by looking at small scale devices. You're absolutely right. Tiny little um, devices on little squares of glass. We then developed the ability to manufacture them on the reel-to-reel -reel equipment we have as part of the AMF materials node. So as you know, we have focused up here at Newcastle on large-scale manufacturing of organic electronic devices. And so these reel-to-reel -reel printers have been invaluable in being able to translate the technology from that sort of small scale up to, if you like, the sort of reel-to-reel -reel prototype scale. Great. And as I mentioned at the start, you've recently received funding from the Australian government um, for a manufacturing facility um, to be built in the Hunter region. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. So the technology that we've been working on, the biosensor technology, was um, spun out of the university in 2016. And indeed, um, the technology uh, was formed part of a company which then listed on the NASDAQ uh, in December 2020. That raised capital to undertake the next phase of clinical trials and testing. 
And then earlier this year, we applied for and were, <clears throat> excuse me, and were successful in obtaining funding through the Modern Manufacturing Initiative. So um, we now have $12.6 million to build the first manufacturing plant to make these devices at manufacturing scale. And that's really exciting. And so we will be translating that technology and the factory is to be located here in the Hunter, here in Newcastle, um, and close to the existing AMF laboratories uh, so that we can translate the technology and start manufacturing devices. Now the target is a hundred million devices every year. Wow, that's incredible. Mm. So I'm assuming that'll also come with new jobs as well. Absolutely. So it's really exciting because this is this is an example, I think, of of how we are able to show that investment in early stage research 15 years ago has now led to the development of new technology and the creation of new jobs, new high tech jobs in a region that's crying out for them as we start mm. to transition from our existing um, jobs base uh, to what I hope will be a new uh, future based on high tech manufacturing. Mm. And what's the timeline for this facility? Um, the facility will be ready in 18 months. So that's the goal. So we're moving very fast now to get the facility installed, equipment ordered and um, commissioned within 18 months. Great. And I guess the harder question, how long until we can sort of hope to see this work translated um, you know, into clinics and um, to be able to help those affected with um, diabetes? No, it's a great question. And, and look, the, the focus now is on the development of the technology, uh, the manufacturing of the technology, if you see what I mean, the large scale manufacturing um, to allow us to engage with clinical trials. Uh, and then we could see devices on shelves in as little as two years time. Wow. Oh, that's amazing. Very, very good to hear. And I, I also believe these biosensors can be used for a number of other applications as well. Yeah, absolutely. So what we've shown is that the technology is a platform technology. We can actually integrate a variety of biomolecules directly into that transistor structure and make a variety of low cost printable sensors. So for example, we're now working on sensors for cancer, for allergens, for hormones. And indeed, we're also working now on a sensor for COVID. Oh, fantastic. Great. Well, look, thanks so much for taking the time to have a chat and congratulations on the, um, the news and the new funding that's coming through. It looks like it's all going to um, come together very nicely and you know, progress um, rather quickly by the sounds of things. No, absolutely. No, thank you, Sam. It's been lovely to talk to you today um, and lovely to be able to tell people about what we're doing up here at Newcastle.